Hey guys, good morning. Uh, April 3rd, uh, final push to prepare for the CASP. So this is uh, chapter 7 and what we'll be doing today is taking a look at triangles and helping you to prepare for once again that final end of the year assessment, the CASP. Alright, so right off the bat, uh, chapter 7 is going to ask you what is the difference between a complementary and a supplementary um, angle? And those are angles. One of the things I want you guys to try to remember is complementary is 90 degrees, the, the, the addition of two angles that equals 90 degrees, and supplementary is the addition of two angles that equals um, 180. And so one of the ways that I kind of think about, if you think about the comparison of a class and a school, you know that a school has more students. Just kind of a funky little way to help you to memorize that um, complementary is the smaller of the two and supplementary is the smaller, the greater of the two. So think about once again, comparing a classroom to a school. There are more students in a school, school 180, larger class, 90 smaller complementary and supplementary all right so take a look 42 plus 48 is 90 so once again that is a complementary angle these two angles are complementary uh, when you add 42 plus 48 you get 90 once again if you add the eight ones you get 10 ones you regroup to the 110 and then 110 and four tens and four tens is nine tens that's 90 as you can see, 106 plus the 74 is going to equal 180. These two angles, when added together, are going to make a 180 degree angle. That is a straight angle. Um, obviously, when we add these two acute angles, they equal a right angle. 180 degrees, supplementary. Okay, so S for supplementary. I'm now going to move forward. If we could please go ahead and take a look at the next two problems, problems three and four. As you can see, uh, you need to know the difference between acute, right, and obtuse. So what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly kind of review that. So acute is going to be any angle that um, is measured with a protractor from zero degrees to 89. And the reason why I stopped at 89 is because a 90 degree right angle is a right angle. So once again, A, uh, acute, um, R, right. And one of the things that I, I kind of want you guys to kind of remember, um, a way that I kind of think about memorizing acute, think of cute, small. Uh, when you think of things that are cute and small, um, you can kind of associate that with being an acute angle, zero to 89 degrees. Now a right angle, it remind, reminds me of a L, and then the opposite, obviously, um, is is kind of the opposite of left is right. So these are both right degree, 90 degree angles. And then, last but not least, uh, anything from 91 to 179 degrees is obtuse. And when I and I'm trying to make the the word obtuse sound big, large, fat, gordo, right? Uh, when I think of obtuse, I think of obese. Um, unfortunately, um, there are epidemics in this in this country where people are very large and heavy, 600, 700 pounds, and uh, obesity, childhood obesity, obesity is a problem in America. Very large, overweight people, and obesity um, once again is due to um, overeating or some type of health. Uh, um, problem that causes people to, to gain weight. So 91 to 179 degrees is obtuse. And then a straight angle is a 180 degree angle. If you were to put your protractor on this uh, line, uh, you would measure from one side to the other, and that is 180 degrees. Okay, so uh, classify this angle. Well, uh, this is 20, this is 125, and 35. If you add them together, Yes, uh, you, you will know that uh, 35 plus 20 is 55, and 55 plus 125 is 180. So you are um, going to identify this as an obtuse angle. Um, now, it is obviously larger than acute, or larger than right. They may, they may use the word straight angle to, as well, but uh, 180 degrees 
is obtuse. Once again, 35 plus 20 is 55. 55 plus the 125 is 180 degrees, an obtuse angle. Um, so in this case, they do associate the 180 straight angle as obtuse, but I would actually um, try to identify 180 as being a strain angle, but those aren't your options. Uh, if you look at question number four, once again, scaling, isosceles, and equilateral. There's three way, or two ways of identifying a triangle, either through measurement um, or through the degrees. Um, in this case, when I think of scale, I think of a weight scale, and a scale is going to have um, a variety of different measurements. If you stand on a scale, your friend may not weigh the same, uh, and then the next person is going to weigh probably different. Different weight. Um, so when you think of scale, think of a triangle that has um, possibly three different measurements. Um, I know that kind of looks uh, possibly like an isosceles, but let's say that these three sides are measured um, and they have different measurements. This would be a scaling tri triangle. Isosceles is, when you think of the word iso, think of um, isolated. There is one measurement that is by itself. It's lonely. When you think of isolation, you're, you, you don't have anyone to hang out with. There's not any type of connection, a relationship. Number five uh, is not the same as three. Um, you've also heard of three's a crowd, usually because two people get along and or talk, and then that one person feels left out, isolated. So in this case, uh, question number four, um, this is an isosceles triangle. Um, if you look at uh, problem four, um, another way of showing um, an equilateral is where all three sides um, are the same. And that, if you think of equivalent, think of uh, equal, the same. And this is an example of an equilateral triangle. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, the purpose of these videos is try to help you to to refresh your your knowledge on these concepts. We learned these concepts about two months ago, so hopefully uh, this is um, you know something that you have not forgotten. Uh, question number five. You are going to know that um, the the addition of three angles. This angle. This angle and this angle in a triangle will equal 180 degrees. So you can add up the two known angles, which are 64 and 32, and 32 plus 64 is 96. So 96 plus x is going to equal 180. And you can kind of think about this as uh, basically fill in the blank. 96 plus the unknown number will equal 180. If you take away 96, um, it will tell you what x is. However, there's a different way of doing this. Um, as you can see, I've already taken away 96. Uh, if you take away 96 from both sides, then you can solve for the variable. And one, once, once again, uh, I think this is really important because knowing how to solve for linear expressions, solving for a variable using this strategy um, will help you to do algebraic expressions. And if you take 96 away from 180, you will get 100. You will get 84. And once again, you will have to regroup from the hundreds because you can't take away nine tens from eight tens. But if you use a calculator, you should you should be in in uh, in good shape. Problem number six, they do not tell you the measurement of this angle. You need to know that it is a right angle. This symbol represents a 90 degree angle. 90 plus 60 is 150, so 150 plus the 30 will equal 180. So that X is a 30 degree angle. Um, five, obviously, um, we already solved and I forgot to write that answer, 84 degrees. Problem number seven. 20 plus 130 is 150. This is once again a 30 degree angle. Um, if you were to set up this equation, it would look like this. X plus 150 equals 180 degrees. And then what you would do is you would take away 150 from both sides. And you're left with X on one side and 30 on the other, which is what your answer is. Problem number eight, scale. Um, you really need to 
pull out your pencil, pull out your paper, and sketch this out. So here's your representation of a treehouse, okay? Um, let's just say it's a box, um, but what, what we have here is a relationship uh, between inches and feet. So for every one inch, this is one inch, it's going to equal three feet, okay? Well, if you think about this, you know that for every one inch, it equals three feet. Well, what they're telling you is that the height of the model is 5.13 inches. So think about what you need to multiply by. And if, if we have one inch, and that's three feet, okay? Well, then we are gonna make another inch, and that's gonna be another three feet and then another inch so we're at three three inches right now which is a total of nine feet okay i'll just put three feet here three feet three feet so the top portion is feet and i'm kind of sketching this out this is repeated addition some of you may know that all you need to do is multiply five and one thirds times three but i wanted to just visually show you what's going on here so there's another three feet and then another three feet so right now we're at inches on the bottom. That's one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, and five inches. You can kind of see this starting to look like a ruler. A ruler basically has 12 inches. Now we have one third of a inch. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this up using a different color. I'm gonna break this up into thirds, okay? So what we have here is one foot, one foot, and one foot. That whole inch equals three feet. but they said five and one three inches. There's one inch, one inch, two, three, four, and five. And then this last third of an inch is going to be that one foot. Okay, so take a look. Three, 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 and three is three times five. That's 15. And one more foot is going to be 16. So this is 16 feet. And as you can see below, five and one third inches equals 16 feet. So what is the height of um, the actual uh, treehouse? 16 feet because we have a representation, a model that is basically um, one third smaller and that would make it at five and one three inches. Okay, I'm sorry if that doesn't look like feet. Well, uh, as you can see, uh, we have modeled uh, these uh, eight problems a little longer than I would have liked, but hopefully um, the, the eight problems will help you to uh, complete the rest of the problems below. All right, good luck, guys.